Okay. From Vietnam, chào ông bà. Xin quý vị, tôi ở bên Việt Nam, Hải Nam. Tôi là giáo sư Anh Văn ở thành phố Huế. Tôi cảm ơn. From Laos, somebody, có bà chào. Coi bên Ron Putini, coi yêu mong lao, nung song, sám si, hà phi. Cốp chai lại. This is for you, Galen Burry. Thank you very much, Bob. 1964, South Vietnam, Kaho tribal students and I are making clay cement bricks. I was 22, doing alternative service to the draft with international voluntary services. Tonight's probably the first time you've ever heard of IVS. Let's go back in time a bit. Late 40s, Philadelphia. Fishtown was a tough place for a skinny little guy. My uncle Art, retired welterweight boxer, got down on his knees, planted a few glove punches in my face so I'd learned to deflect, look for an opening. I kept a nickel in my pocket after that. 1949, divorce in the air. Dad drove me from Philly to LA in a 34 Plymouth. We broke down twice in Oklahoma. And it was an Italian-American version of Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> Over time, I learned that dad had less than 10 bucks in his pocket when we arrived. Resettled a few years later in a housing tract in southwest LA. Some new friends invited me to their church. At a part of the observance of the Last Supper, a high school principal washed my feet, an image of manhood I'd never seen before. It was my introduction to the Church of the Brethren. In 1963, I graduated from Laverne College, an affiliate of the church. My football coaches, Dwight and Roland Ortmeyer, he was from Roundup, served in civilian public service during World War II. Guys who walked the Sermon on the Mount, except for that part about the meek inheriting the game. During World War II, historic peace churches, Church of the Brethren, Mennonites and Quakers were recognized by the Selective Service System for their pacifist belief. Over 12,000 conscientious objectors served in CPS. During Vietnam, 170,000 men sought service in alternative service. In 1953, International Voluntary Services was founded as a sectarian version of the people-to-people -people programs the historic peace churches had established for post-war reconstruction. IVS, however, was going to concentrate on the undeveloped world. In 1954, France relinquished control of Indochina, thrusting those ancient cultures into the Cold War's hearts and minds struggle. IVS, funded with USAID foundations and local governments, provided the grassroots outreach, a deployment of sandals on the ground, if you will. We were English and science teachers, agronomists, animal husbandry technicians, civil engineers, nutritionists, young people who consciously or unconsciously took JFK's advice about doing something to serve our country. That's Hamilton Jordan in front. He became President Carter's chief of staff. Peace Corps was modeled on IBS. Two-year contracts, a stateside monthly salary under 100 bucks, an in-country stipend, language training, housing, clothing, and vacation allowances. Ooh, and a generous supply of KO pectate. <laughs> As if liquid chalk could stop that Mekong. This was Pete Hunting, a Wesleyan University grad. He built irrigation windmills in the Delta. He said, I want to serve my country through IVS, not the military. Back from home leave in mid-65, he was ambushed, shot by the Viet Cong. Of the 800 IVSers who served in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, 11 young men did not come home. One drowned, one run over by a Vietnamese army truck. None carried weapons. Seven were conscientious objectors. Irony dominates our memories of them. Pete Hunting, Mike Murphy, Dennis Mummert, Art Stillman, Max Sinkler, Richard Sisk, Marty Klish, Fred Scheidler, David Gittleson, Chandler Edwards, Alex Shimkin. Marty Klish 
My close friend was second in charge of RVS Laos. He'd hitch rides on small Air America planes and fly all over Laos to find IVSers and help them. In 1967, his plane disappeared, located two weeks later, filled with bullet holes. He had just married Irene, an IVSer. David Gittleson, D UC Davis, was a pacifist who'd already served four years in the Army as a medic. He wanted to alleviate the basic causes of war and hasten a lasting peace. In 1968, David was taken prisoner and shot, possibly mistaken for a CIA case officer. Fred Scheidler, a Quaker, wrote on his IVS application, I want to face the problems of this world and I want the personal harmony of that spark of good that's in each of us. He and his Laotian assistant, Chan Ti were ambushed and killed in southern Laos in 1967. Hey, during the Tet Offensive in Way in 1968, IVSers Mark Cayer, a Canadian, and American Gary Daves were taken prisoner and marched to North Vietnam. They spent five years in military prisons alongside POWs. Congress appropriated $25,000 each as compensation. Another old IVSer, who actually lives part-time in Laos, had this observation the other day. He said, despite the communist menace, the dominoes falling, the threat of our shores, look what happened here. It happened anyway, with or without us. You can't avoid feeling heartbroken, even bitter, standing before that Vietnam War wall. 58,195 citizen soldiers, mostly draftees, ordered to go. If there were a memorial for my 11 comrades in peace, they'd be walking with their counterparts, tools in hand, ready to build a future. On Marty Klish's first night home in home leave in 1967, he let a chicken by a bone fly over his shoulder at, a, at dinner, instantly realizing that the usual scruff of mangy dogs wasn't around his mother's table. <laughs> 50 years later, when I see those huge turkey drumsticks at fairs, I am so tempted. 